Vipassana. What the hell does the word mean, anyway? And why am I lighting a candle? <laughs> it means to see things as they really are. We'll come back to that. Hey YouTube, this is hardhuman.com. My name is Jordan. I'm a physiotherapist and a health nut, and I'm here to turn you into a hardy human. So folks, I have a confession to make. I'm a long-term wannabe meditator. I've tried for 10 years on and off to meditate. I've taken little courses, I've read books, I've dabbled in it here and there, but you know what? I'm just not good at it. I'm a list kind of guy. I make lists, I get shit done, I cross it off, I move on to the next thing. Really, that's what I do. So for, for me to sit and be still and just focus on my breath, a major challenge. This past summer, I decided to take that challenge by the horns and sign up for a 10-day Vipassana meditation retreat. It's just crazy. You know why? Here's why. It's 10 days long. You're in complete silence. You don't talk to anyone. You don't look at anyone. You don't have physical contact with anyone. You're in your head for 10 days. You're surrounded by other people, but you're in your head for 10 days. And you meditate for 10 hours a day. You get up at 4 a.m., you start meditating at 4.30, and you finish at 9 p.m. It's exhausting but worth it. So it's the first night. We're all sitting in the meditation hall. I don't know what to expect. I have no idea. And we're sitting there listening and this voice comes over the speakers and it's chanting and it's going And I'm sitting there and I'm listening to this chanting. And I'm like, what the hell? What? I didn't come to a chanting course. What is this? I came to meditate. You soon, you soon learn that the chanting is by this man, this man named S. N. Goenka. And Goenka was born in Burma, and he came to India, and he brought this Vipassana meditation technique with him. And thereafter, Vipassana has spread all over the world. It's pretty amazing. What Goenka has you do for the first three days of the course is he has you focus on your breath. He has you focus here, nose, nostrils, upper lip and he has you focus on just normal respiratory breath, in and out. And it has you focus on the sensation you feel when the breath passes over this area. That's basically it for the first three days. Pretty basic. He wants you to become aware of the sensation in a very small area. So by the end of the third day, you're focusing on the area just inside of your nostrils. Pretty intense, actually. Over those first three to four days, there is so much noise and I mean thoughts constant stream of thoughts that you have absolutely no control over and the most mundane things for me it was a hike I'd been on cheeseburgers that cute girl over there and kind of I'm embarrassed to admit what I thought about for those first three days most of the time transformer movies <laughs> yeah transformer movies and I kind of got to the point where I was like, is there a hamster up there on a wheel? Is, is someone making decisions that I don't know about? Because I feel like this energy isn't qualified to decide on anything, right? Anyway, those thoughts, the noise, that slowly begins to calm over the course of, over the, course of the first few days. So what's interesting has happened is that as you begin to become more aware of this small area, your faculty of awareness increases. Your, your ability to notice everyday things in life becomes sharper. I'll give you an example. It's the middle of the night on the fourth day. I'm exhausted, I'm sleeping, and I'm jarred awake because someone is shaking my bed. Someone is jarring my bed in this rhythmic fashion. I sit up instantly angry. I'm like, who's doing this to me? Who's shaking me awake in the middle of the night? And no one is doing it to me. My roommates are passed out, they're snoring, they're exhausted. They're just sitting there. And I, that's like, that's strange. I lay back down. I'm like, oh my God, it starts up again. I soon realize it's my heart. My heart is shaking my body and what it feels like is my bed. Now, the interesting thing is that this is clearly happening all the time. It's just that I'm not aware of it. In that moment, I was. So you begin to see how you become more aware of the things that are happening all the time around you. 
So day four to day 10, and this is when you learn the actual Vipassana technique. Guetika teaches you to begin to become aware of the sensation in your body, okay? The reason he teaches you this, and this is important, is because what he teaches is that the unconscious mind is not unconscious at all. The unconscious mind is continually reacting to every situation it encounters 24 seven. And when it reacts, it slams into the framework of your physical body and a sensation is created. Itchy, hot, cold, pain, whatever. And this is what you're taught to observe. You're taught to observe that continually changing flow of sensation. And you're taught to observe it, not judge it, and ultimately have no attachment to it. As you observe and begin to become less attached to it, you begin to be able to step away from it. You begin to realize that the sensations you feel, this constantly changing flow sensations, are not you. You begin to realize that your thoughts are not you. You realize that everything you included is in a constant state of flux. Things are changing literally moment to moment to moment. And this experiential knowledge within your body framework is what Goenka would say makes all the difference. You realize that the, you, the world, your surroundings, the people that are in your life, we're not quite what we think we are. We think the world is coming at us. We think we have to go out and interact with it and make everything okay. The world is happening inside. The world's happening in here. And as you begin to experience the reality of that, it shifts your perspective. And when you have that shift, you can take life with a bit more joy, a bit less serious, and a bit more lighthearted. And more importantly, this is the beginning of seeing things as, the real, as they are. This is the true nature of reality, as Goenka and the Buddha would teach it. Okay? Here's another example. It's day number eight. I'm tired. I'm outside. I'm on a walk. I'm just sitting down, and I just look down, and I see some ants. And normally my brain would be like, where are they going? What are they doing for food? I wonder what their colony is like. I wonder if it's healthy. I wonder how the queen is doing. That would be my more normal pattern. Instead, I just observe them. Pure observation. And I sit there and I observe them and I can almost feel and see their movement as a, as a unit. Their movement and their ability to move with one hive mind. None of them, and I feel this, none of them have independent goals of each other. And the distance between me, them, and the ground kind of merges. And there's a flow. And there's an experience there that I feel as if I'm just one part of a very long chain. And I don't feel isolated at all. I feel I'm included in something that I never would have thought about before. Pretty amazing. So by the end of day 10, the noise had cleared. I was feeling much more free. And a couple things had happened. One, I had freedom from the chatter. I had freedom from thoughts. I had freedom from the idea that I am my thoughts. It was like my mind was sort of a white blank canvas. It was like my mind was returning home to a space that I had previously occupied. And I knew quite well, but I'd forgotten about it. Absolutely fascinating. Secondly, I feel like I had the beginning via my body experience of the understanding, the beginning of the understanding of the true nature of reality beginning of seeing things as they really are. So if you're considering a Vipassana meditation course, I would say stop considering and just do it because it might be one of the best things that you ever do in your life. If you like this video, please click the real, little red subscribe button below and check me out at hardyhuman.com. Peace.